Welcome to Economics 1723 Capital Markets. This is the online lecture module for Lecture 12 on the Dividend Discount and Gordon Growth Models. So we'll start with the general framework of dividend discounting at a constant rate. That's the so-called dividend discount model. And then we'll look at a special case of that model in which dividends grow at a constant rate. And that's the, the Gordon Growth Model. So the key assumption of the dividend discount model is that an asset has a constant expected return over time. So its expected return, ET, RT plus 1, this is the expectation at time t of the return in the next period, is just a constant number that we're going to call R. Now we refer to this constant number, the expected return, also as the discount rate. It's a constant discount rate over time. Uh, and I think the reasons for this will become clearer, but, but basically when we talk about expected returns, we're thinking forward in time. We're, we're thinking of investing now and earning a return later. Whereas when we talk about a discount rate, we're implicitly working backwards from the future to the present. We're asking what discount rate, when applied to future cash payments, will give us the current price. And um, in this course, you may have noticed we, we go quite flexibly between expected returns and discount rates between the forward view and the backward view. They're, they're just two different ways of expressing the same thing. All right, so moving on, uh, we have that this number R is the expected return. Now, what is the return? That's the uh, dividend tomorrow plus price tomorrow divided by price today minus one because we're doing this. And this is a net return, not a gross return. And if we rearrange this equation, it tells us that the price today is the expectation today of dividend plus price tomorrow divided by 1 plus r. That's to say discounted by one period at the discount using the discount factor 1 over 1 plus r. All right. Now, that equation that I just showed you is um, what's called a difference equation. That just means that it involves um, values of price uh, at both time t and at time t plus 1. So let's go back and look at it. There's On the left, we have the price at time t. On the right, we have the dividend and price at time t plus 1. Now, this same equation must hold at time t plus 1. So we can substitute in for pt plus 1 using the time t plus 1 version of the equation. All right, so this is the procedure of solving a difference equation forward by repeatedly substituting out future values of p. So let's do the first step explicitly. The price tomorrow at time t plus 1 is the expectation at t plus 1 of the two period ahead dividend plus price divided by 1 plus r. So now if we substitute this into the previous equation, we're going to get price today is expected dividend tomorrow discounted over one period plus tomorrow's expectation of the two period ahead values discounted over two periods using 1 plus r squared. All right, so hopefully you can see how we can keep repeating this operation. If we go forward in time, k periods, we're going to end up with the price is the expected sum of discounted dividends over the next k periods. All right, so this is dt plus 1 discounted using 1 over 1 plus r to the 1, dt plus 2 discounted using 1 over 1 plus r squared, and so on, up to time k. And then at the very end, we're going to have the expected discounted price at the terminal date, uh, t plus k. Now, if you look at this equation, you may be wondering what happened to the future expectations. Okay, in this equation, going back one slide, we had an ET, and inside here we have an ET plus 1. But remember, we've already talked about the law of iterated expectations, and that law of iterated expectations allows us to get rid of these future expectations, because the, the expectation today of the expectation tomorrow of something is just the same as the expectation today of that something. That's the law of iterated expectations. So we can get rid of all these, and then working forward k periods, we're going to have this expression. Now, the final step is to assume, or to assert, that the price of the asset cannot grow forever at a rate that is equal to or faster than the interest rate. In other words, if we look further and further into the future, look at expected future prices and discount them, uh, that that, uh, disc that, that um, is going to go to zero as we look further and further into the future. 
In other words, the price is not growing fast enough over time so that the discounting will force the discounted value to zero. Well, if that's the case, then we can take this previous uh, k period sum and extend it to the infinite future, and we have the statement that the price is the expected discounted value of all future dividends out to the infinite future. This is sometimes called the fundamental value of an asset. Of course, I haven't told you where the, the, where the number r comes from. This is the, the discount rate. Uh, here it says discount factor, but a discount factor would be 1 over 1 plus r, uh, and r is the discount rate. This discount rate adjusts for risk. We can do that according to the earlier theories we've seen. You can pick your favorite model, the CAPM, the APT, Pharma French multi-factor model, whatever you like. Okay, so that's the dividend discount model. Now, what is the Gordon growth model? This is a nice special case in which we assume that dividends are expected to grow at a constant rate, g. So well, we've already assumed that the discount rate is constant. Now we're going to assume, in addition, that the dividend growth rate is constant. To make the calculations a little easier and simplify the notation, we're going to also assume that the dividend is known one period in advance so that ET dt plus 1 just equals dt plus 1. In other words, the firm announces its dividend one period before it's paid. Well, in that case, the expected dividend looking forward uh, i periods beyond tomorrow is just 1 plus g to the power i times the dividend we know we're going to be paid tomorrow. So all future dividends can be described in terms of the next period dividend dt plus 1, and this is going to simplify the dividend discount model, abbreviated DDM here, and we're going to be able to express all prices in terms of the dividend tomorrow. So how do we do that? All right, well, we're going to have the price is the discounted dividend tomorrow. We know we're going to get this. Plus the two period discounted expected dividend two periods from now, which is just one plus G D DT plus one and then so on. You can see as we move forward in time, we're just going to be multiplying each time by 1 over 1 plus r and multiplying by 1 plus g. So these powers of 1 over 1 plus r and g are just going to keep growing. Now, I can rewrite that by taking out the first 1 over 1 plus r, putting it at the beginning, and then I'm going to have an infinite sum of 1 plus g over 1 plus r to the power i times dt plus 1. So the trick is to evaluate this infinite sum. Now this is just a geometric series starting at zero going to infinity. And we know that the sum from i equals zero to infinity of x to the i is one over one minus x. In this case, x is one plus g over one plus r. So we have one over one minus one plus g over one plus r. Slightly messy looking expression. But we can simplify this by multiplying this term in the middle here by 1 plus r on the top and the bottom. And we're going to get this. We have 1 over 1 plus r times 1 plus r divided by r minus g. You can see that these 1 plus r's are going to cancel out. And we're going to end up with dt plus 1 divided by r minus g. Looks to me as if there's a missing dt plus 1 right there, but I'm sure you can fill it in for yourself. At the end of the day, the price is the dividend to be paid next period divided by r minus g. So the, um, in talking about this, we usually drop the time subscripts. You just need to keep in mind that the dividend here is one period ahead of the price. Um, and we can say p over d is 1 over r minus g, or we can say d over p equals r minus g, which has a nice ring to it. Or you can uh, say it like this, r is d over p plus g. This is a nice way to understand it. It, it. We're saying that return comes from the income plus the capital gains. The income is the dividend yield, which is constant in this model, and the rate of capital gains has to be the rate of dividend growth precisely because the dividend price ratio is constant, so everything is growing at a common rate. So in Jeremy Siegel's book, for example, he applies this. He uh, calculates some long-run uh, averages from historical U.S. data, and he finds uh, the long-run historical average R to be about 7%, the dividend yield to be about 4.5%, and the growth rate to be about 2.5%, and indeed 7 equals 4.5 plus 2.5. And, 
So uh, hopefully uh, you will see when we talk about it in lecture uh, how useful this uh, formula can be and the many applications it has. Thank you.